My name is Lauren Wilson. Um, I work at Run Lab, and I'm going to take you guys through the gait cycle today. So, what we consider the gait cycle is going to be from the time a runner's foot hits the ground, their body weight translates forward over that stance leg, their foot pushes off the ground, comes through the air, and then hits the ground again. That's what we consider one gait cycle. And what we do here at Run Lab in the clinic is we break down the gait cycle into component parts and we try to train the movement skill and the strength and the coordination and the underlying physiological attributes necessary to make that component part of the gait cycle stable and efficient, which is going to lower the probability of a runner getting injured and it's going to optimize running performance just by having more efficient form, loading the body in the most efficient way, and just getting the most efficient propulsion mechanisms out of one's body. So let's go ahead and break down the gait cycle and do the component parts that we look at here at Run Lab. So the first thing is as the foot is coming through the air and then it first makes contact with the ground right here, this is what we refer to as initial contact, when that initial ground reaction force is going to enter the body. And a few big things that we're looking at here, one is where is the foot landing in relation to the knee, and then where is the foot landing in relation to the hip. So kind of the, the best analogy that I can give you is if this person was to hold a weight way out in front of them, they would feel a lot of strain going through their shoulder. Same thing here, if that foot lands way out in front of the knee or way out in front of the hip, they're going to have abnormal strain going through the knee joint, through the shin, and through the hip. Other things we look at, it, look for an initial contact are going to be what is the knee flexion I have? What is the posture that I have? What are the arms doing? What is this opposite swing leg doing? Is it out to the side? Is it getting up? And then what, what part of my foot am I landing on? What does that foot strike look at? How much does my foot point up? Is it dorsiflex a lot? Is it more flat? What is this angle here between my, my shin and my foot? That shank angle right here. So those are the, a couple of the different things that we're going to be looking at at this initial contact part of the gait cycle. Next part is going to be what we refer to as initial loading response. So as the runner accepts all the load and transitions from initial contact to mid stance. Big things we're looking at there really are do they achieve triple flexion? Are they flexing at the ankle, the knee, and the hip? and what does the stability look like through the pelvis and through the spine as they accept the load. Right here, with all, when all the body weight of the runner is on one leg, this is what we refer to as the mid-stance portion of the gait cycle. And this is when the runner is going to be underneath the most amount of load during the running gait. Big things we're looking at here are again similar to the initial loading response. Is the runner flexed at the ankle, the knee, and the hip? What does their pelvis look like? What does their spine look like? What does their head carriage look like? What does their arm carriage look like? Because again, you're producing you're producing three to ten times your body weight with each step during the running gait cycle. And this is a lot of load to be able to, to accept right here. So those first three parts of the gait cycle, the initial contact, initial loading response, and mid stance are what we refer to as the loading response part of the gait cycle. The next part, the half of the gait cycle is gonna be propulsion and swing. So how well you accept load, how stable you are when you accept load is gonna determine how efficient you are when you push your body off the ground and forward. If you're unstable when you hit the ground and then you accept all that load, 
well, you're gonna be very inefficient at turning that load from the ground into nice, efficient propulsion energy and nice bounce energy. Going back to the parts of the gate cycle though, after this mid stance part, your leg is going to start extending behind you and you're gonna have some nice hip extension right here. And that's what we're looking at. Your heel's gonna come off the ground. So we refer to that as hip extension and heel off. And then you're gonna have toe off and then initial swing. So right here, you can see the runner both has both feet off the ground. That's a nice float phase. A lot of times people don't generate enough force to get a float phase and that means they're not going to be able to hit the ground efficiently enough to get those nice elastic components out of their tendons and their muscles and they're going to have less bounce. More of that energy from the ground is just going to be absorbed by their body rather than returned as the nice propulsion energy if you don't have that nice float phase. So after initial swing, the, the foot is going to continue to come up. You'll go into mid-swing here, and you can see this runner has a nice tucked figure four position. They picked up their foot. They put some tension on that posterior chain so that when they transition through mid-swing into terminal swing and that foot starts to unfold, now the muscles responsible for bringing the foot back underneath them, underneath their knee and underneath their hip, are going to be able to generate enough force because they put enough tension. A lot of times runners don't use the proper muscles to get their foot nice and high into that figure four position. So when the foot unfolds, it doesn't generate enough force to pull back underneath them. So then their foot will hit way out in front of them and they'll tend to overstride. So to conclude, two big points here. One is when you look at running, you're just doing a series of single leg squats to hop over and over and over again. So keeping that in mind, you're able to design exercises and you're able to design protocols to make those movements as efficient and as stable as possible. The next thing that I want to conclude with is each part of the gait cycle affects the next part. So if I have something going wrong during this loading response, I'm probably not going to be as efficient at propulsion. If I'm not efficient at that toe off, my swing may not be as efficient. If I'm not as efficient during this swing phase, well that's going to affect my initial contact phase and then the rest of the gait cycle. So it's getting each of these parts, working on them separately, but then also you need to progress them down a funnel to making sure they all work synergistically as well. So that's going to be the gate cycle. I hope that you learned a little bit and that you're able to take some of this knowledge and apply it to just running with a better form now. To get a run lab movement analysis profile, you can submit your videos at www.runlab.us and we'll analyze your videos. We'll generate a 14 page movement analysis profile report and you'll be able to have us analyze your videos similar to, to this but from the front, the back, and the sides and go through that report of your findings. So don't wait. Now is the best time to identify where your limiters are and start to run with more efficiency and, and less injury.